you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Matthew. We are going to start a study in Matthew, a verse-by-verse study in Matthew. And I am extremely excited about this study. I love all four of the Gospels. Uh, Luke comes a close second in my favorite Gospel. Uh, But Matthew, I am telling you, it is rich. It is rich. Uh, The Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes, uh, Jesus is quoted more in Matthew than any uh, of the Gospels uh, that were written. And I'm telling you, it's going to be an exciting study. Let me give you the outline if you have a bulletin and want to go with us through that. Uh, The title of my lesson is Jesus' Earthly Father. Because it's not Christmas, all right, I'm not using a Christmas slant per se. We will go through the Christmas story, uh, but we're going to look at it from Joseph's point of view today. And again, if we were in December and it started there, I thought about just starting in chapter 3, and then I'd then I got to thinking, well, we wouldn't do the whole book of Matthew if I started in chapter 3. So I am excited about what the Lord has done. Number one, Joseph was a just man. Joseph was a just man. Number two, Joseph was a faithful man. Joseph was a faithful man. And number three, Joseph was an obedient man. He was an obedient man. You know, Matthew wrote... Uh, the book of Matthew, with a Jewish audience in mind. And all of the Gospels had a different emphasis on what they were trying to do, all four Gospels. And Matthew was written, and you you think about this, 25 to 30 years after Jesus uh, was on earth. And so Malachi, you look at that, the last book of the Old Testament, in 400 years had gone by, okay? There was almost a silence uh, from heaven during this time. But, (coughs) excuse me, Matthew picked up, and I'm telling you, Matthew will uh, lay the foundation of all of the New Testament, and that is an exciting thing. The central truth of Old Testament prophecy is the coming of a great king who will rule God's promised kingdom. And we know that is Jesus Christ. The full identity and nature of this king are first seen in the Gospel of Matthew. The focus is totally on Jesus. He is the only one who fills all the prophecy spoken of in the Old, in the New, no, excuse me, in the Old Testament. Matthew, who was also called Levi, was a tax collector who worked for the Roman government. You just say tax collector, and I get a bad feeling, okay? There was, there was a fixed rate. Uh, the Romans charged everyone, but the tax collector could collect more if they wanted to. Because of this extortion of money, tax collectors were hated by most people. Matthew's salvation, the huge change in his lifestyle, and Jesus' call for him to be a disciple Prove Jesus' ministry was for real, and salvation is for real. The message of the book of Matthew points to Jesus, uh, Jesus' kingship. No gospel speaks more about being a follower of Jesus Christ and what it means to be a dedicated disciple for him and his kingdom. So, So let's look at the book of Matthew Verse 1, the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. And when we think about this genealogy, we know it has to begin with Abraham and Abraham's call and the promises that God made to Abraham to make uh, the Jewish people a mighty nation. And when you look at it, the beginning begins it begins with Abraham, and you go all the way down through these names. And by the way, I am not going to go down through the names. I will not give you the blessing of laughing at some of the pronunciation I would do. So get that off of your mind, okay? I thought about asking Phil to stand, come up here and do it for me, but I thought, no, nah, we'll just bypass that. But there's a couple of things that I want you to see here. Uh, In Matthew is the lineage of Joseph. 
okay? This is Joseph, all right? The, the, you know, the earthly father of Jesus. Now, we know he was not the biological father of Jesus. He could not be the perfect son of God if that was the truth. So we are talking about uh, Joseph. We are talking about Mary, and we're talking about uh, probably two teenagers, Okay, you could be married legally in those days at the age of 12, according to history. And there's, you know, again, there's maybe not hard proof, but most people think they were probably 14 or 15 years old. So we look at the lineage there, and what's amazing, uh, uh, Luke has Mary's lineage. Matthew starts with Abraham. And, and Mary's starts exactly opposite. They start at the beginning in Matthew and go, go down to Jesus Christ. In the other one, and look, if you look at Luke chapter 3, it starts with Jesus Christ and goes back to Adam. I thought that was an interesting thing uh, that, that really sticks out. Another thing that sticks out is in this list that we see in Matthew, there are four women and there are Gentiles. And why was that? Because listen to me, folks, God loves everyone. The gospel is for everyone. And that is what I believe is going on in the first part of this. Now, skip down to verse 16, if you would. And Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary. You look at this here, every one of these, when you start reading this, so-and-so begot so-and-so. And so-and-so begot so-and-so. It's given the lineage of that. And here, it's, it doesn't say, it says Jacob begot Joseph, and then it says the husband of Mary. So again, you have to understand that Jesus was not, I mean that Joseph was not the biological father of Joseph, of whom was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. And folks, when we think of Jesus Christ, Jesus was an extremely common name back in those days. But when you add the word Christ, it literally means the anointed one. So many Old Testament scriptures, Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14, Isaiah 9, uh, you know, and there's places that said the coming of Jesus, and he was going to be a king. He is going to be a king. Even though the Jewish, that many Jewish people did not recognize him as king, in Jesus' days, there was the scribes and the Pharisees would not rec recognize the deity of Jesus. But Matthew points this out several times in the book of Matthew of who Jesus was. And folks, who you came from is important. You could historically look up these things. And Matthew went through details to get this list so that we would understand he was of the lineage of Abraham and of the lineage of King David. And that is biblical prophecy, which means the Old Testament agrees with the New Testament and the New Testament agrees with the Old Testament. It is all right. There are no errors in it. There are no mistakes whatsoever. Then in verse 17, it says, so all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 uh, generations. From, from David to the captivity in Babylon are 14 generations. And from the captivity uh, in Babylon and Christ are 14 generations. And folks, it's, it, it's, it's just so clear of the timetable and the history that Matthew is trying to get in here uh, and and it's, it's really an amazing thing. Now let's look at verse 18. Joseph was a just man. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. And folks, the birth of Jesus Christ is the single most important event in history. Amen. In history, the virgin birth. Folks, I am telling you, I will fight tooth and nail to anyone that wants to debate the virgin birth. I'm telling you, it had to be that way. If not, if Joseph was his biological father, then he would have had a sin nature. And the Bible clearly says that it was a virgin. After his mother Mary was betrothed 
to Joseph. And you have to understand betrothed is what we would call our engagement period. The only difference is during their betrothment or engagement period, if they busted up, if, if they broke up, you had to do it by divorce. That was how serious they were about that, that year's time. And they still lived with their own family in the consummation of the marriage was after a year's time. Before they came together, there were no premarital relationship between Joseph and Mary. She was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Now, someone that doesn't read the Bible, someone that's, you know, that, that has no biblical background whatsoever would simply say, you're crazy. Okay, how does a virgin have a baby? Well, I got news for you folks. God can do anything. All right, my God can do anything. He don't need anybody's help. He don't need anybody's approval. It was the Holy Spirit. God placed the Holy Spirit inside of Mary. And Mary became the, the mother of Jesus. And she was found with child with the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, uh, uh, being a just man, and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her, her, her away secretly. Now here's, that, I'm just telling you, when, when I read this, and I've been in, over the Christmas story, I could not tell you how many times, that word just man just stuck out to me. You know what he could have done? Do you know what they did in the Old Testament? If you go to Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 10, if a man committed adultery and a woman committed adultery, if a man slept with another, uh, you know, another woman, you could be put to death. You could be stoned. So that was one of the possibilities. Or Joseph could have quietly just divorced her. Now guys, how would you feel if someone you were engaged to got pregnant? And you're sitting there thinking, well, I know it wasn't me. And so Joseph, I am telling you, and it's so neat the way God works things out. Folks, God had a plan. And his plan is always right. And it says, a just man, not wanting to make her public example, was minded mind to put her away secretly. But I am telling you, he would not do that. There was something in his DNA there was something in his life. There was something telling him, and folks, I believe with all my heart, it was the Holy Spirit saying, I know it doesn't look good. I know this doesn't make sense, but just hang on. Just ponder, okay? Folks, even when it seems God isn't doing something, we need to trust God. And that is what he did. Romans chapter 12 I always like to apply what we learn uh, to other scripture. Romans chapter 12, go with me if you would. And here's what I believe is a short list of characteristics of a just man. Okay, this is our application. Let love be without hypocrisy. See, Joseph could have just went through the motions and acted like everything was fine, and in his heart he would have been bitter and other things you know, and, and, you know, not talk to her, or, or there were several uh, reactions that Joseph could have had, but he did not have any of that. And folks, our love needs to be genuine. God loved us, and we should love others the way God loves us. Abhor, which means hate what is evil, cling to what is good, be kindly affectionate to one another in brotherly love, in honor, or giving preference to one another. And you know what that's talking about? It's just saying, man, you need to treat people right. You need to be nice. Even when people are not nice to you. Folks, we are the Christians, okay? We are the one that walks with Christ. And I'm not talking about being a, you know, a, a rug and people just walking all over you and stepping all over you, okay? But I'm saying we need to react the right way. Verse 11, not lagging in, in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Do you realize 
that I believe that Mary was handpicked by God, but I also believe Joseph was handpicked by God. And when you look at the Christmas story, it's always Jesus and it's always Mary and it's always Jesus. That's why the Lord kind of gave me this different slant to the beginning of Matthew. Joseph did the right thing. Joseph trusts God. Joseph was a just man. man. Listen to me, folks. We need just men and just women out sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with others. Verse 12, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continually steadfastly in prayer. He was hanging on to the hope. Man, I, I, I just, I, I try to put myself in Joseph's place. You know, it's hard to believe, but hey, I'm going to believe her. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust her. And it says patient. There had to be patience in tribulation. Think of the wagging tongues that we're talking during that time. Did you hear Mary is pregnant? Okay, folks, do not be a part of that. Do not be a part of that. Continue step fastly in prayer. I believe Joseph got caught up on his prayer life. <laughs> All right. I, I bet he cried out to God more than once. God, I do not understand this. But God, if you say it so, it is so. And isn't it great that God, and, and I tell you what, folks, here is our problem in our prayers. When we pray, we want God to instantly answer that prayer. He has no obligation to do that to you. He has a reason and a purpose in everything he does. Yes, you can have it. No, you can't have it. Hey, you're going to have to wait. And we don't like waiting. Amen. Oh, my goodness, on our way home, when we come through Conway and we get back on uh, the highway and, man, three lanes, we're leaving Little Rock about 530, and all at once, everybody started slowing down. And I am telling you, all of my being, what is going on? Well, there was a wreck up in front of us. It took us an hour and 15 minutes to go 11 miles. And man, I had the little toot on. I was traveling tired. And do you know what the Lord told, said to me? Have you even thought about praying for those people who had a car wreck? Folks, I'm telling you, we are so impatient. We want it now. And God had a purpose for what he was doing. He wasn't punishing Joseph, okay? He had a purpose in waiting. So we see Joseph was a just man. Number two, Joseph was a faithful man. Oh, folks, we need faithful men and women. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Boy, you know, I, I just wish one time God would do that. Just send an angel down. That way I know what, the, what he is saying, okay? But folks, the key to that, we have the Holy Spirit inside of us. I have never seen an angel. I have never heard the voice of God from heaven, but I know when God is talking to me. I know it. And it says, and the angel appeared to him in a dream, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid. Now folks, uh, you know, it, all through the gospels, Jesus was saying this to his disciples. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. It's going to be okay. And then it says, do not be afraid to take, uh, to take uh, you, to you, Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. He had been pondering. He had been praying. And God sent him the message hey, it's okay. It is the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Oh, folks, how would you like to be, uh, you know, the, the father of Jesus? Okay? And when you think about him, you know, he was a carpenter. And Jesus uh, obviously, in those days, you, you just almost always followed in the footsteps of your father. But to be 
you know, to, to raise Jesus. And, and the, the thing about it is, is that we don't really know how long uh, he lived, Joseph lived. We really don't know his ending or what happened. But folks, he was there for this time and for this person, the, the, for this person, Jesus Christ. And it was him that was earning wages back then. It was him taking care of his family back then. It was him that God entrusted this son to. And, and it shows what, what a faithful man Joseph was. Folks, faith is so, so important. Hold your finger there and go to Hebrews chapter 11 with me. Hebrews chapter 11. Folks, we need faith in our lives. We need to practice faith. We need trust. We need to trust in God's timing. We need to trust in God's will. All right? There's times that things don't look like they're going so good, but we have to still trust God. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And folks, if you can see it, if you can make it ha happen, it's not faith. Faith is believing when you can't see it and no one else believes it. Folks, God, all through, matter of fact, what is Hebrews chapter 11? It's faith hall of fame. These are people that did mighty acts of God because of their faith. And while it almost seems like Joseph fades from the picture, while he is in the picture, while he is the father of Jesus, we know he at least lived uh, for the first 12 years of Jesus' life because one of the other gospels, when, when Jesus uh, was in the temple and they were traveling and they came back and, and got Jesus. So we know at least he poured 12 years of his life and he was faithful in that. Now look at verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Oh, folks, I am telling you, he said it to the disciples many times. Where is your faith? Where is your faith? Why are you afraid? And that's what I'm saying, folks. With God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, we should trust him with everything we have. But I'm still saying, folks, it's the timing of it all. We want it, and we want it now. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe. Folks, we must believe. That's a command. That's not an option. There is no situation in life that God cannot fix. There's no situation in life that is impossible according to the word of God. And while you look at what happened, you, you know, nobody since, nobody before Mary and nobody after Mary uh, had a baby that was a virgin. It was a one-time deal because he was the son of God. Then it says, it must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Also, look down in verse 8. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. We already talked about Abraham. We already talked that he begun Joseph, Joseph's lineage. And he went out not knowing where he was going. That is faith. Where are you going? Hey, just head west. Where do I stop? And he wasn't Googling anything, folks. All right? He had no clue where he was going. God did not give him a road map. By faith, he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him in the same promise. All right? David was going to be in his lineage. Jesus Christ himself was going to be in his lineage. And here's the, you talk about faith. For he waited for the city, which has foundations, who builder and maker, <coughs> excuse me, is of God. Folks, we're talking about the beginning of time. We're talking about years and years and years 
ago. He, you know, there wasn't a written word of God, okay? The prophets had to speak during that time. And so what did he believe? He believed that one time, uh, uh, one day, one day, Jesus Christ was going to be born. One day, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, is going to come from heaven. And he believed with all his heart that because of his faith in God, he would have a heavenly home. Oh, folks, I'm telling you, I don't know how bad it gets some time, and I'm not trying to, you know, make your problems small. I'm simply saying, folks, if we look at the big picture, if we look at what's going to happen, we have a heavenly place already built for us. And Abraham was living that in his life. Second thing in the second scripture I want to see is 1 Timothy 5. 1 Timothy 5. 1 Timothy 5. We're talking to the men here. But if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, he is denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Folks, I am telling you, men, God has given us the responsibility to take care of our families. Joseph took care of his family. Joseph listened to the voice of God through an angel. Joseph obeyed God. Now let's look back in our scripture. Verse 21, and she shall bring us forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from, it, from their sins. Oh, folks, you need to thank God for the virgin birth. You need to thank God for the life of Jesus. You need to thank God that he was willing to die on a cross for you. You, you need to thank God for his mercy and his grace. He came looking for you. You wasn't looking for him, but he found you. He adopted you into his family, and he's saying, you will be mine. And folks, I am telling you, my favorite part of any meal is dessert. <laughs> Give me something sweet. And folks, our sweetest days are in front of us. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I went by a coffin one time, and in this man's hand was a fork. And boy, people were thinking, what in the world? Why, does he like to eat? And at the end of the service, uh, the, the preacher that preached his funeral said, no, he, he is getting his dessert right now. Oh, folks, we're going to a better place. This world is messed up. Hate, shootings, division, all these things going on. But I'm telling you, folks, one day God's going to get us out of this place because of Jesus Christ. Verse 22, so all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which is spoken by the Lord through the prophet saying, behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. God with us. Folks, I'm telling you this prophecy that we just uh, read comes from Isaiah, Isaiah 7, 14. And listen to me, here's why I believe the Bible it was written 700 years before Jesus showed up on earth. Folks, only God can do things like that. Amen. Only God. So we see Joseph was a just man. Joseph was a faithful man. And Joseph was an obedient man. Look at verse 24. Then Joseph, being aroused from his sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He didn't have a conversation with God. He didn't say, now, when is all this going to take place? He didn't ask questions. He did exactly what God told him to do. And folks, that wasn't the last time an angel spoke to Joseph. Because you remember 
uh, when King Herod was killing the babies, he told them, you get yourself, you get your family and you get out of here. Okay? So God, because of his obedience, just kept blessing him and blessing him and blessing him and did not know her until she had bought, brought forth her firstborn son. And by the way, we do know uh, Jesus did have brothers and sisters, according to the word of God. And uh, he called his name Jesus. Folks, I am telling you, Joseph obeyed the Holy Spirit, and he got the blessing from that. Deuteronomy chapter 11. Deuteronomy 11. Look at verse 26. Well, let's go back to 22. Let's go back to 22. And this is the children of Israel. Okay? This is the children of Israel. This is after uh, uh, they had left Egypt and was in the promised land. For if you carefully keep all these commands which I command to you, to love the Lord your God, to walk in His ways, and to hold fast to Him, then the Lord will drive out all these nations from before you, and you will dis you will dis uh, dispossess greater and mightier nations than yourself. That is a promise from God, folks. There's blessings. We have so many blessings in our lives. If you woke up today, that was a blessing. Amen. If you drove your car to church and didn't walk, that was a blessing. If you've had an air conditioner the last three days, <laughs> that is a blessing. Every place on which the sole of your foot treads shall be yours. From the wilderness of Lebanon, from the river, from the river Euphrates, even to the western sea shall be your territory. Look at this. No man shall be able to stand against you. The Lord your God will put the dread of you and the fear of you upon the, all the lands you tread, just as he has said to you. Folks, there is no power greater than God. We should fear no man. No man. We should not fear Satan. Folks, he is a defeated foe. And I believe the reason things are like they are, he knows the end is coming. He knows his punishment. He will be bound to hell and live there forever and ever and ever. So he's just taking everybody he can with him and causing havoc but our God is greater. Verse 26, Behold, I set before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing, if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I commanded you today, and the curse, if you do not obey the commandments of the Lord your God. But turn aside from the way which I commanded you today and go after other gods which you have not known. Folks, we cannot follow the world. The world is not heading where we're heading. The world does not have values that we have. The world does not know God like we know God. The world is all about itself. And folks, we are God's children. The very thing he said to his children early in the Bible is still true today. Blessings blessings if you obey him and cursings and not and again can i let me just paraphrase this god's judgment okay god's judgment when we disobey the word of god first timothy 4 and i close with this first timothy 4 i love this verse and what it made me think of is joseph and mary uh raising jesus they were young they were young Look at verse 12, let no one despise your youth. I'm telling you, our youth are on a retreat. Uh, they went Friday and Saturday and Sunday. And, uh, you know, Marty, man, they all do a great job. Missy and Landon, uh, you know, our, our kids are so blessed to have those as leaders. But folks, uh, you know, our, our youth, you know, they, they can make things happen. They can stand up for God. They can, uh, you know, be a witness at school. So here it's saying, 
Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to other believers in word. Folks, our word needs to be truth. There's no time it's okay to lie. In conduct, we need to act Christ-like. In love, God is love, 1 John says. In spirit, the Holy Spirit. And folks, I've said this ever since I got into the ministry. You can get the right answer every time of any question that is asked of you. What would Jesus do? He was the perfect Son of God. In faith, we need strong faith, and in purity. Folks, Matthew was trying to say, hey, I got news for you. I am going to be the first one to announce this. Jesus is coming. He is going to be born of a virgin. He is going to live a perfect life. He is going to die on a cross for you. And he is coming again. Amen. Oh, folks, we need to be ready. We need to be ready. If you're here today and you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I am telling you the greatest decision that you could make today is to be saved, to invite Jesus Christ into your life, to not just believe in a God, but put your faith and your trust in God and in Jesus and making Jesus Lord of your life. Then we as Christians need to think about Joseph. You know, like I said, he just kind of went off the pages of the Bible and there's no record of him. But folks, I am telling you, I believe with all my heart, according to the scripture that we saw today, he was faithful in what God gave him to be. We as Christians need to be faithful. Father, thank you for this day. And God, I thank you so much for Matthew. And God, I just thank you for Mary and Joseph. Oh God, they were so young and what a responsibility. So God, I pray today, if there is one person here that doesn't know you, today would be their day of salvation. God, the angels in heaven would be rejoicing. And God, we just pray, Lord, that the Holy Spirit would speak to folks today. There may be Christians here that need to rededicate their life to Christ. They're not as close to Christ as they once were. They've lost that joy sometimes in their lives. They live a semi-defeated life. And God, I pray, Lord, that that recommitment would just start a spark in them. And God, we thank you, Lord, just, just for this church and your spirit being here. Lord, if somebody needs to come uh, forward and to uh, be baptized, I pray that you would speak to them today and even church membership. They've been here at all. They know who we are and what we're about. So God, this is your time. This is your invitation. God, I pray with you, do, you would do what you choose. And God, we'll be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Would you stand to your feet? Our ministers will be here at the front. If we can help you in any way, would you come?